down syndrome will be a short case so there are uh, two ways you can start presenting it suppose if a mother is a very educated one and if she is knowing the diagnosis you can start your presentation like it a uh, child is a known case of down syndrome but uh, most of the time that will not be a scenario mother will be knowing that child is having some problem so uh, i am going to uh, present the case in that way okay so 3 year old male child uh, residing in pallavaram who is a known case of a genetic disorder so informant is mother whose reliability is good uh, the child was brought with a chief complaints of fever for 3 days cough and cold for 3 days so history of presenting illness uh, child was apparently normal 3 days back to start with uh, he had fever for 3 days which was low grade continuous fever which not associated with chills and rigor and uh, history of cough for 3 days which was a dry cough insidious onset there was no diurnal variations no aggravating or relieving factors uh, it was associated with nasal discharge which was white in color uh, no history of sore throat so when you say genetic disorder the thing is in the presenting illness negative histories you should ask complaints uh, uh, not particular to a single system you should cover all the other systems also because when it is a disorder it may have uh, child may have defect in all the other uh, systems so first you should explain the presenting illness and we are moving to the next part so when the mother has said cough and cold you should assess the severity of the uh, respiratory infection so for that first we are asking about no history of noisy breathing so noisy breathing it may be strider which can be inspiratory or expiratory so it's basically uh, strider is the obstruction of larynx or trachea it can be an audible wheeze which is mostly expiratory and it uh, denotes lower airway obstruction so even snoring can be uh, perceived as a noisy breathing it is an inspiratory one and it is because of oropharyngeal obstruction and grunting it is a forced expiration against a partial closure of the glottis it is mainly expiratory so this can be a noisy breathing and with regarding to down syndrome uh, if the child is having persistently noisy uh, breathing during sleep it can be due to obstructive sleep apnea also so that point you should remember next thing is so to assess the severity of the infection to uh, delineate whether it is an uri or an lri we have to uh, ask the four questions whether history of fast breathing or difficulty in breathing is there or not no history of altered sensorium no history of lethargy or drowsiness no history of difficulty in feeding when the child is having severe uh, respiratory tract infection child will have hypoxia so hypoxia can lead to altered sensorium lethargy drowsiness and child may not be able to take any oral feeds so next thing is no history of ear discharge or ear pain uh, any uh, down syndrome is uh, particularly they are prone for uh, recurrent serious um, recurrent uh, uh, ear canal infections mainly serious otitis media so you have to ask no history of ear discharge or ear pain no history of neck swelling to rule out lymphadenopathy no history of myalgia any viral infection child may have myalgia no history of poor weight gain suppose if the child is having uh, associated um, uh, cardiac problems or recurrent respiratory tract infection child may not gain weight but in down syndrome mostly they are associated with obesity but if they are having a very serious cardiac disease underlying cardiac disease they may not gain weight next thing is regarding to the gastrointestinal system no history of vomiting so vomiting why we are asking is to rule out any atresias in the gi tract annular pancreas and no history of constipation Uh, mainly down syndrome they are associated with hypothyroidism so to rule out that and also to rule out hirsprung disease no history of abdominal distension so there will be abdominal distension if the child is having hypotonia so mainly for this this these three questions should be asked uh, then any history of delayed dentition should be asked history of any no history of seizures no history of any rash or any bleeding manifestations mostly the down syndrome they are prone for um, Uh, leukemia when compared to the general population so you have to ask about any bleeding manifestations or any rashes like petechiae purpural spots anything and no history of impaired hearing and vision to rule out uh, otitis media can lead to uh, hearing loss in a down syndrome child and also ch- they may have cataract so to rule out that you have to ask impaired hearing and vision no history of nasal nasal regurgitation of food to rule out cleft palate so these are the things we have to ask in the presenting illness moving to the past history a uh, child was diagnosed to have some genetic disorder at birth and was evaluated on evaluation child was diagnosed to have a uh, congenital heart disease for which a child is on regular follow up no medications were prescribed for the child and no history of recurrent respiratory tract infections no history of previous hospitalizations so all these things clearly says us that child has some 
uh, asynotic uh, heart disease and uh, no history of previous hospitalization no history of recurrent respiratory tract infection Ch says the child has a normal uh, course not a stormy course so maybe a mild variant of heart disease might be there for this child and contact history no history of contact with tuberculosis and the definition for recurrent respiratory tract infection they may ask you at this point of time so when the child is having more than six infections in one year with each infection lasting for at least a week and these should be treated in a hospital so this is the definition for a recurrent respiratory tract infection as such a down syndrome child because of hypotonia uh, frequent aspirations they may have recurrent respiratory tract infections also if the child is having a um, heart disease it may also lead to recurrent respiratory tract infections so antenatal history is very important uh, when it comes to a genetic disorder or a syndromic child so it should be in a, in a detailed way second order child born out of uh, non consanguineous marriage and this point uh, this uh, point should be clearly mentioned what was the mother's age at the time of conception we all know more than 35 years the risk of uh, down syndrome is very high so mother's age at the time of conception was 38 years so first trimester dating scan was done folic acid was taken by the mother no history of fever with rash no history of drug intake or radiation exposure so possible uh, antenatal insult whatever could have happened can lead to a disorder or a syndromic child should be clearly mentioned second trimester quickening felt at 16 weeks this is also very important when quickening was felt because when a child is having hypotonia or a muscular perceived the fetal movements well so these these questions should be clearly asked iron and folic acid uh, was taken by the mother two doses of tetanus uh, toxicoid were given anomaly scan was done which was reported to be normal no history of gestational diabetes mellitus or hypertension third trimester fetal movements were well perceived by the mother no history of fever and scans were done in the third trimester which was normal so if there are if there was any problem you should it should be mentioned in the uh, uh, all these uh, histories birth history full term normal vaginal delivery birth weight was 2.7 kg history of neonatal hyperbilimia for which the child was on phototherapy for two days most of the down syndrome child will have an associated uh, neonatal uh, jaundice so that should be mentioned and breastfeeding was initiated soon after the birth uh, which indicates us that the uh, uh, neonatal uh, newborn period was uh, quite normal for this child and no history of seizures no history of bluish discoloration and no history of any nicu admissions so next thing is developmental history so all four domains should be asked and mentioned so gross motor the child is able to uh, walk without support and the age of attainment is 3 years expected age is uh, 15 months so developmental quotient is 41.6 so the formula to calculate dq is average age at, at attainment divided by observed age at attainment into 100 so this is how you should calculate dq dq below 70% is taken as delay fine motor child is able to scribble now and uh, it has attained this milestone at 3 years expected age of uh, attainment is 18 months so dq is 50 percentage social child asks for food and drink so age of attainment is 3 years expected age is 24 months so the dq is 66.66 percentage language child is able to speak one or two words with meaning so age of attainment is 2 and 1/2 years expected age is 12 months dq is 40 percentage so when you see that motor and language is most um, affected uh, usually down syndrome they'll be socially well they'll be mingling with other child they'll be usually happy child so social uh, part the dq is a little high 66.66 percent motor is affected more so other things you can may write it as a normal immunization history one thing is they are prone for recurrent respiratory tract infection so you can mention the part whether optional vaccines uh, were taken a pneumococcal vaccines are given or not nutritional history so by 24 uh, hour recall method you should write it family history pedigree chart is a must so ideally you should uh, include uh, two generations so which was uh, if there are any similar uh, syndromes or genetic disorders in other family members it should be mentioned uh, socio economic history you can write it as a normal so summary of the history 3 year old male child second order child born out of non consanguineous marriage who is a known case of some genetic disorder with asynotic congenital heart disease presented with fever cough cold for 3 days with no fast breathing or difficulty in breathing with global developmental delay with nil significant antenatal history and family history i would like to give my provisional diagnosis as syndromic child with respiratory tract infection probably upper respiratory tract infection with asynotic congenital heart disease and global developmental delay
so moving to the examination part uh, child was playful alert active so no pallor ictus cyanosis clubbing pedal edema lymphadenopathy pallor is very important because uh, down syndrome child are more prone for all aml and lymphomas uh, in a newborn period they they will have polycythemia and transient myeloproliferative disorder so they may have it so this is the reason why we are looking for pallor in a down syndrome child clubbing to rule out infective endocarditis cyanosis to rule out cyanotic congenital heart disease lymphadenopathy to rule out leukemia so vitals you have to check the temperature respiratory rate uh, 28 per minute regular abdominal thoracic type pulse rate uh, rate rhythm everything should be mentioned blood pressure it is normal 90 to 60 mm hg uh, blood pressure should be measured and written and if, if um, and also all peripheral pulses should be checked because uh, congenital heart disease are most commonly associated with down syndrome so for this purpose blood pressure and pulse should be properly checked anthropometry weight is 12 kg against expected of 14 kg height is 88 cm against expected of 95 cm head circumference is 42 cm against expected of 49 cm mid upper arm circumference is 13.6 cm against expected of 13.5 cm i have not uh, uh, mentioned it any growth charts because for down syndrome separate growth charts are there but uh, it is it is based mainly for the western children so no down syndrome growth charts are available for the indian children so i have not put that chart but normal chart when you put for a down syndrome child it, it will mostly it will be like um, stunting and wasting uh, so i have not put it so for down syndrome separate charts are available head to toe examination so yeah this is very important from head to toe what are the features of down syndrome are there you have to mention it mostly they will have brachycephaly so fontanelles will be fontanelles are closed for this child low hairline may be there hair looks normal but some children will have alopecia sparse hair so you should mention that flat face mongoloid slant epicanthal fold depressed nasal bridge protruded tongue these are the most commonly seen features oral cavity mostly they will have dental caries no cleft lip cleft palate hypertelorism present short neck uh, trunk looks normal spine and back looks normal hand simian crease press present brachydactyly is present brachydactyly is short stubby fingers that is called brachydactyl sandal gap seen in the feet genitalia looks normal skin looks normal so they may ask you at this point what is brachycephaly when the anteroposterior diameter is less than the transverse diameter it is called brachycephaly just opposite of dolichocephaly so at this point of time they may ask you what are the uh, mostly down syndrome child may have a delayed closure of fontanel so if it is there they will ask you what are the other conditions associated with delayed fontanel closure so here are the few things i have mentioned here down syndrome skeletal mostly all skeletal dysplasias hypothyroidism rickets this down syndrome hypothyroidism rickets are the commonly seen conditions with delayed uh, fontanel closure other things you can read so they may ask what are the other syndromes associated with mongoloid slant so prader willi and ectodermal dysplasia and uh, other syndromes which has an anti mongoloid slant most common is stretcher collins upwards noonan syndrome and krausen syndrome also have anti mongoloid slant and a few conditions which have short neck like down syndrome this hypothyroidism klippelfeld de- deformity turner syndrome and noonan syndrome so they may ask you what is the criteria to diagnose down syndrome in a newborn period all criteria should be remembered just remember the 10 points which should be uh, seen to uh, diagnose down syndrome so all criteria poor moro reflex hypotonia flat facial profile upward slanting palpebral fissures uh, small rounded ears uh, redundant loose uh, neck skin single palmar crease hyper extensible large joints abnormal pelvic radiograph hypoplasia of the fifth finger so this is all criteria 10 points will be there just you have to remember the points at least you have to remember the criteria's name hall's criteria so moving on to the systemic examination as a child presented with cough and cold we'll be dealing with respiratory system as our uh, first system so upper respiratory tract uh, no no uh, alarm is if flaring is there nasal septum no deviation white nasal discharge is seen in the nose oropharynx looks normal posterior pharyngeal wall looks congested so coming to the lower respiratory tract inspection shape of the chest appears normal chest movement appears equal on both sides trachea appears to be in midline no retractions no scars sinuses are dilated veins palpation trachea is in midline chest movement is equal on both sides with respiration no tenderness percussion uh, resonant note you have to mention all the lung fields uh, for time sake i have mentioned it resonant note on both sides 
auscultation normal vesicular breath sounds heard on both sides no added sounds so coming to the cardiovascular system inspection shape of the chest appears normal apex beat is seen in the left fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line no precordial pulsation seen in the parasternal border no scars or dilated veins jvp is not elevated palpation apex beat is felt at the left fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line which is normal in character no parasternal heat auscultation s1 s2 heard pan systolic murmur of grade 3 by 6 is heard in the lower left sternal border so other uh, examination you can write normal cns examination it has to be uh, little detail uh, you have to uh, mention about the deep tendon reflexes because sometimes when the uh, down syndrome they may have hypotonia so there will be delayed relaxation of the deep tendon reflexes or it may not be a normal one it will be it may be a little sluggish so that should be mentioned if it is there and uh, tone if, you, uh, if the child is having hypotonia then that should be mentioned in the cns examination if it is not there then you can write it as a normal one so mainly tone and reflexes should be mentioned properly in the down syndrome child so diagnosis Three year old male child was diagnosed to have genetic disorder and congenital heart disease at birth, presented with fever, cough, cold for three days, with no previous hospitalization, who on general examination of features suggestive of Down syndrome, with pan systolic murmur of grade 3 by 6 in the lower left sternal border. I would like to give my provisional diagnosis as Down syndrome with asynotic congenital heart disease, most probably ventricular septal defect, with no signs of congestive heart failure and infective endocarditis in normal sinus rhythm. With upper respiratory tract infection and global developmental delay, so your uh, diagnosis should include what syndrome they are dealing with, what are the associated problem they have, plus development should be included. So mostly they will have developmental delay, so that should be included in the diagnosis. So coming to the discussion, first they will ask you what is Down syndrome. So Down syndrome, we all know trisomy twenty one is Down syndrome. So uh, what is trisomy? Trisomy, you should know the difference between trisomy and triploid cells. Trisomy is presence of three chromosomes instead of the normal two of any particular chromosome so in one particular chromosome there will be three chromosomes triploid cells is there will be three haploid sets of chromosomes that is triploidy so what is aneuploidy so abnormal cells that do not contain a multiple of haploid number of chromosomes is called aneuploidy so what the most common chromosomal abnormality is aneuploidy so you should know the definition for aneuploidy the most common cause of aneuploidy is meiotic non disjunction in down syndrome also the most common cause is meiotic non disjunction so features of down syndrome i am not going to read the entire one this is a chart from the nelson so the one ma marked in the um, uh, asterisk is the important one which is the hals criteria so just you have systems clinical features of down syndrome and they may ask you uh, what are the associated features of down syndrome so you should know all those things so grouping pattern of chromosome so chromosomes are normally grouped from a to g so you have to remember this so in uh, down syndrome what happens is uh, if it is a meiotic non disjunction it is going to be trisomy and uh, if it is a translocation one it is going to happen between this d set of chromosomes that is called acrocentric chromosomes 13 14 15 and uh, g 20 21 22 so these between the d and g translocation happens so we will be discussing it now so cytogenetics of down syndrome is very important most common 95 percentage is trisomy 21 so 4 percentage can be a translocation variant that happens between the d and g set of chromosomes 13 14 15 21 22 21. among this the most common is 14 21 translocation so these are called acrocentric chromosomes they have a long arm of uh, chromosomes so the translocation happens in this side and mosaicism that is only 1 percentage uh, chance Cario why this uh, cytogenetics is very important is karyotype of the parents is only required if the affected child has a translocation causing down syndrome so only we are doing the karyotyping for the child suppose if the affected child is having translocation then the karyotype of both the parents should be done so they may ask you name other uh, some aneuploidy is other than down syndrome so commonly seen as edwards and patau syndrome edwards is trisomy 18 and patau is trisomy 13 sex chromosomal uh, sex chromosomal aneuploidy is a turner syndrome and kleinfelter syndrome so intellectual disability in down syndrome is uh, always moderate whereas in uh, edwards and patau it is very uh, severely affected incidence of down syndrome it is 1 in 800 to 1 in 1000 so uh, they may ask regarding uh, patau syndrome and edwards syndrome 
so only thing is developmental delay is uh, very severe and uh, severe intellectual disability will be seen in both edward and patahu and uh, lethality is they 80% die by one year of age so this is common to both patahu and edward syndrome so features you can read it from this main thing is they will have an overlapping of fingers uh, they will have other features but also an overlapping of fingers will be seen in edward syndrome uh this is very important so risk of down syndrome with uh, pertaining to maternal age so most important thing is to remember is more than 40 years the risk is 40 to 44 years the risk is 1 in 100 after 45 years the risk is 1 in 50 uh, so this is 15 to 29 years the risk is 1 in 1550 30 to 34 years the risk is 1 in 800 30 years more than 35 years 35 to 39 years it is 1 in 70 so more than 40 1 in 100 this is very uh, important to remember they may ask this the other thing is recurrence so when a mother is having a single child with down syndrome what will be the recurrence risk for the next pregnancy this is also very important risk of recurrence of down syndrome due to chromosomal aberrations so this is why you should do a karyotyping of the affected child so as said when the translocation is d and g so first you have to check the whenever it is a translocation karyotyping of the parents is must so when the father is normal and mother is a carrier the chance of recurrence in the next child is high 10 to 15 percentage whereas when the father is a carrier the risk is less it is only 5 percentage this much you should remember when the translocation is 21 22 if the mother is a carrier again the chances are high father is a carrier the chances are less 21 21 translocation is very important because the chances of recurrence is 100 percentage whoever may be the carrier maybe a father or mother when the translocation is 21 21 it is the risk is going to be 100 percentage trisomy 21 it is only one translocation or mosaic when both are normal not the carrier it is less than 1 percentage so the thing to remember is balance translocation 21 21 is the only situation where all viable fetuses will have down syndrome so this is very important point to remember associated abnormalities this is uh, this is a chart given in uh, op guy so most important thing to remember i have highlighted is congenital heart disease is the most commonly associated uh, thing with the uh, down syndrome endocardial cushion defect among the heart diseases endocardial cushion defect is the most commonly seen 40 to 60 percentage so next will be your uh, hearing defect conductive hearing loss 40 to 60 percentage we know atresias and the um, uh, annular pancreas is commonly seen in downs ophthalmic problems like cataract nystagmus hypothyroidism 15 to 34 percentage is seen in the down syndrome child atlanta occipital subluxation 10 to 30 percentage and linear growth is retarded malignancies you should remember aml um, m7 variant is more common and all uh, newborn period they may have transient lympho lymphoproliferative syndrome so investigation so how, how you will you investigate a child with down syndrome there are two sets one to confirm the diagnosis the other is to know the complications so to confirm the diagnosis karyotyping of the child is a must Uh, so if they are uh, they have translocation then we are do we are going to do the karyotyping of the parents also to know their if they are carriers uh, and also to determine the future risk so complications we all know leukemia so we have to do a peripheral smear complete blood count x ray spine it should be done at the age of 3 to 5 years to look for atlanta axial dislocation x ray chest to uh, to look for the heart size to look for any cardiomegaly uh, with regard to congenital heart disease and rib abnormalities x ray bones to look for the epiphyseal centers delayed maturation will be there x ray pelvis to look for dislocation of hip uh, echo and uh, ecg to rule out congenital heart disease thyroid function test to look for the thyroid status to rule out hypothyroidism so these are the investigations we are going to do so evaluation main thing is how will you monitor the child how are you, how are you going to assess the child so this chart is very important dental examination every year you have to do and all these things growth auditory ocular thyroid profile all these four should be twice a year the first year and annually till 5 years so until 5 years every year you have to check for the growth hearing uh, vision and the thyroid profile cardiac evaluation at the earliest whenever you uh, when the child is coming to you for the first time you should evaluate a, evaluate a cardiac status or before 9 months of age hematology screen for leukemia twice a year in the first year and monitor as per the need this is how we are going to monitor a down child treatment there is no definitive treatment so like normal child nutritional management immunization is a must so main thing is if they need any uh, visual or hearing um, uh, assessment and aids it should be given speech therapy 
special school should be uh, given uh, special education should be given for uh, down syndrome child and they have any complications it should be treated child is having hypothyroidism thyroxin replacement should be given congenital heart disease surgical correction when the child is having recurrent respiratory tract infection it should be treated with appropriate antibiotics if the child is having seizure then the anti convulsant should be prescribed child is having any orthopedic problem physiotherapy should be given main thing is genetic counseling so you should explain to the mother what is the risk of recurrence for the next pregnancy and what are the prenatal diagnosis options available so this should be a properly explained and anticipatory guidance you should never say the child will become normal over a period of time so you should uh, uh, ventilate the parents what is a natural history of the disease and what are the complications expected uh, to a child with a down syndrome so antenatal screening all this point is very important all women should be offered for down syndrome screening in second trimester irrespective of their age so all women should be given the uh, chance for down syndrome screening in second trimester but the indications you sh it should be done is when the maternal age is greater than 35 years when the mother had a previous child with down syndrome translocation carrier state in parents and history of genetic defects in the family so in, in this conditions screening is a must but all women should be offered for down syndrome screening in the second trimester so this chart will be very useful what are the prenatal test used for down syndrome screening main thing is you have to remember this quadruple marker uh, from maternal serum at 15 to 22 weeks uh, sensitivity is high 80 percentage these are the four things we are going to check in the quad screen inhibin free beta hcg alpha fetoprotein and unconjugated estriol and um, the other things uh, triple marker which is commonly done which is free beta hcg alpha fetoprotein unconjugated estriol so please read this chart this is very important and the sensitivity is also very important and the last one combined blood maternal serum markers and the nasal bone combined ultrasound and the maternal serum markers the sensitivity is 95 percentage so this is very important and they may ask you what are the invasive and non invasive uh, tests done for the prenatal diagnosis invasive test is karyotyping by the sample is obtained by chorionic villus biopsy amniocentesis cord blood sampling so the weeks are very important samples are used for chromosomal analysis and dna analysis uh, for uh, fish is the rapid test with results are available within 24 to 48 hours non invasive testing is maternal serum markers like what we have uh, seen in the previous slide ultrasonography by looking for the nucleal nucleal translucency and nasal bone and uh, this last one is very important non invasive prenatal testing detection of the cell free fetal dna in the maternal plasma is an important advance in the prenatal diagnosis of down syndrome so this is a line from nelson so now the new test is cell free fetal dna which can be done in the maternal uh, serum uh, it, it is a non invasive test but again if it is positive then it needs confirmation by invasive testing so classical markers for down syndrome in antenatal scre screening is many things are there but the important one i have mentioned here increased nuchal fold thickness hypoplastic nasal bone short femur and humerus length duodenal atresia so these are the classical markers they may ask you what is nuchal translucency and what are the other conditions where it is increased so nuchal translucency is nothing but it is a subcutaneous fluid accumulation in the posterior neck of a fetus so when do you say it is increased when the nuchal translucency measurement is above the 95th centile for the crown rump length then you say it is increased so the other syndromes are conditions where it is uh, increased is newnan syndrome smith lemley optus syndrome and skeletal dysplasia so these are the areas where it may be increased so mortality in down syndrome main cause is congenital heart disease that is a chief cause for mortality other things are recurrent lower respiratory tract infections leukemia and sudden death atlanto axial dislocation is also a cause for mortality so how will you prevent genetic disorders this is not for a down syndrome in general genetic disorders how will you prevent one thing is carrier screening newborn screening prevention of neural tube defects by appropriate folic acid supplementation so for a normal pregnancy it is 0.4 mg when the mother had a previous child with neural tube defect it is 4 mg and it should be started one month before the uh, conception and continued for 3 months after the conception maternal screening second trimester screening quad screening is very important thank you if you have any doubt you can ask